Good morning and welcome to Coffee with Dan. This morning I thought of discussing about uh, the difficulties faced by uh, many uh, Sri Lankans, especially uh, the children or the students in uh, mathematics areas. We know that uh, sometimes uh, children do not like to do maths because of uh, the difficulties that they are facing in the subject. But uh, to talk about uh, this area and how to make children interest in uh, the mathematics area, I have Mr. Divesh Bhatija from India, who is the founder of Dinasim Learning LLP, uh, who would like to talk about how to make mathematics interesting. Now, talking about Divesh, he's a he has a graduate degree from uh, in H, from HR College and Masters from University of Westminster, London, and he started working in the financial space in 2012, venturing into this learning space. Good morning, Divesh, and welcome to Coffee with Dan. Good morning, Dan. Thank you for having me out here. Now, if we talk about the breaking the myth behind mathematics, which is the title of today's discussion, what is the perception when it comes to mathematics? Well, math as a subject, uh, you know, people actually misidentify uh, this as a subject. I would call this more of a language, which is misinterpreted by all, but spoken by none. So I feel, uh, you know, math is something which is universally being used by everyone on a daily basis, but it's just not been, uh, uh, you know, acknowledged that I'm using math on a daily basis. Now, mathematics is considered not only a kind of... Uh... A subject but also as a language we know that uh, the Chinese are very good in mathematics uh, especially uh, coming from the, the time of Confucian uh, in China so how do you see mathematics is that a subject or a language well when I talk about as a language I talk about the fact that how every person is subconsciously using this language uh, you know anything and everything right from the time the child or uh, anybody technically wakes up in the morning till the time the person is going off to bed a person is constantly using a lot of math uh, be it planning his day be it planning his finances be it uh, you know shopping being it anything else a child is a child human being any 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 parent teacher or professionals technically everyone's only and only using math day in and day out so when I talk about math being more of a language, I mean how, uh, you know, people talk about abstract things like algebra and geometry and they keep wondering that why are this is why is this included in a part of a curriculum? Now, technically, a person looking at, you know, planning a holiday is using algebra. A person planning to do anything is creating equations, building formulas, which, which of course, we're using it subconsciously, like I said. It's not very specific to, you know, how we're using math. That's, that's the gap which I feel is, you know, that's the gap which is there between the education system and the way we are actually approaching the subject. I think the issue made it very clear uh, that uh, mathematics is a kind of a language rather than a subject because we know that uh, some, uh, though some children do not like to study mathematics, uh, it, it is not only in the subject area but also in constructing arguments uh, in any kind of uh, subject. Mathematics uh, may provide a good basis. So uh, what should parents do to inculcate maths in an easy manner for their children? Well, talking about making math easy for children, uh, the, the only way that I see is to track their favorite uh, hobbies and see how what they love doing in their free time, trying to use that to, you know, perceive mathematics. So let's say, for example, a child is watching television and parents could say they're watching television, let them time the amount of uh, duration of the advertisements and the actual content of the show and then create fractions, ratios. Now, when a parent is doing this in a very effortless manner, A, the child does not really feel that he or she is actually doing any specific sums or something which is allocated from the textbooks but what is really interesting for them is that what they're studying in school is actually happening live in front of them on their favorite TV show so that makes it a little more interesting just a random example that I shared but if you look at it from a perspective that a child you know, if a parent can map this to all their hobbies, be it cycling, swimming, and then allow them to look at how maths has been used in each one of this, it becomes a little more easier for them to perceive this subject. Now, we have seen in Sri Lanka that uh, in the ordinary level examination, mm -hmm. uh, many students uh, 
tend to fail in the mathematics area. Uh, how, how do you see this trend in India, for example, in your country? Well, maths is definitely a fear for everyone, be it, uh, I mean, be it India, be it Nepal, be it other countries that we're working with. But, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm based on the way you've also put it across for Sri Lankan students as well, I think the core problem that children actually face is they don't realize why are they doing this subject in math. Uh, various concepts that they have, they have that fear because they don't know where they're actually using it. Talking about a simple example to correlate as of today, uh, Nobody goes and teaches children how to use social media, do we? Do we teach them how to use Facebook, Twitter? No. They teach us how to use it because they're inclined towards it. Similarly, when you talk about math, it's something which they feel they've been forced upon and they don't really know where is it applied. And because of that lack of application, the kind of fear, and because of that fear constantly building up, they kind of fail in the exam. So if you ask me the main crux of all of this is lack of understanding that where, whatever I'm using in my maths, where is it actually used and why am I doing? So you ask any child as of today that you're doing percentage, you're doing fractions and you ask them why are you doing this? We rarely get an answer for that. So how do you propose to empower every child in Sri Lanka to look at mathematics beyond the textbooks? So uh, we are trying to figure out ways to work with teachers so that they could gamify the subject. Now, why do we want to gamify it? Because when we pick up a game which a child uses in his free time, like I said initially as well, it's easier to map mathematics around what children really like. So if you pick up games which children really like, like for example, soccer, cricket, which is a very big sport in Sri Lanka, uh, looking at any indoor, outdoor sports, you pick up any of this and you start mapping that with mathematics. So let me give you a simple example to do with, with cricket. So let's imagine a child is watching a cricket match not necessarily playing only so uh, when you're looking at that a child could look at economy rate uh, average strike rate now let's say strike rate for example a child should understand that why is he doing strike what is he identifying in the strike rate a batsman is batting he's got say 100 runs out of 100 balls that means he's got 100 percent strike rate while on the other side a person has scored 50 runs out of 50 balls he's still having a 100 percent strike rate so that means percentage is a tool for comparison when the denominator is different so when the base is different so one batsman played 50 balls one played 100 balls so how much has he or she scored out of it so technically when you look at such things and you start identifying and you map this to various parts be it your uh, average be it your economy rate of bowlers and trying to understand how are they performing and the most important use of algebra in a cricket team is selection of the team so whenever Sri Lanka is going to play against any team across the world I'm sure the the, the entire management is going to sit down and see whom are they playing against are they playing against a country which has got good batsmen who can bat against spinners they'll take more fast bowlers so so that's an, that's an equation that they create. And why do they create that equation? Because they want a proper decision. And decision making is based out of mathematics. So which is why, uh, so what we try, intend to do, I mean, coming back to your question, um, we want to empower teachers so that they can actually look at mathematics beyond textbooks by taking simple games, playing that in the classroom, which is very easy to uh, you know, actually do in the class uh, without any uh, heavy duty technology, which does not impact too much on the cost as well and doesn't really uh, take up too much of time of the curriculum. This whole thing as a preposition, when you look at it, it becomes a little more easier for teachers to empower children to start thinking in a different way. You know, uh, I mean, I may uh, go overboard on this, but if at all, uh, you know, you talk about what was the reason why a lot of children don't really have an interest towards math, I think we're teaching children uh, what we are mainly focused on giving them the right answers while we need to f you empower them to ask us the right questions. That is where uh, I see that we really need to do too much because we don't give them games which is, you know, uh, tickling their minds or trying to empower them to think in a different way. We're giving them questions which has to follow a certain equation. That is where we need to make a major transformation. Now, you being the founder of Dina Sim Learning, Divesh, uh, you, we, we discuss about uh, cricket but I will come to that question later but uh, how important is mathematics in design thinking creating problem solvers for Sri Lanka and how have you implemented especially through your um, invention or initiative to, uh, to empower the children who are learning mathematics to pursue in this area and to perform well uh 
as you rightly mentioned design thinking which is uh, you know creating problem solvers for any country this is the base now if you look at it at design thinking as a very core uh, definition of that it means uh, creating solutions out of every problem that's the whole concept of design thinking the basis of math is to have a question and to find an answer for it so when you look at something like this you're looking at using mathematical tools to become the basis for design thinking now if we ensure that every child is empowered to deal with every question in a different manner rather than following a, the same trend of questions or the same way of solving a particular question you're empowering them towards design thinking at a very early age uh, we're looking at uh, you know creating a lot of cross connection between uh, entrepreneurship and mathematics using our mod modules of gamification which allows children to actually understand that every time you, as an entrepreneur you need to solve a problem and to solve a problem you need to have a lot of hurdles and those hurdles can be eliminated only and only when you have a proper thought process in mathematics and not just because maths is perceived as numbers and number crunching it's not only about that it's about logical building right so when we run our entrepreneurship programs which is backed with mathematical concepts so we see children also this is for the higher grade children when you see them from grade 6 or grade 7 onwards you're looking at them trying to play games uh, based on entrepreneurship uh, backed by mathematics and those allow them to uh, think in a different manner and the end result of all of this lies in making proper decision a proper decision could be made only and only when you've done a proper analysis and you've done the proper methodology given by mathematics now we earlier discussed that mathematics is more of a language than as a subject Correct. but we know that in school curriculum every child has to learn uh, compulsorily the subject of mathematics uh, only up to O levels but uh, do you think that uh, we should be uh, uh, taken beyond O levels and even to the advanced level because we know that language for example the, the second language for example to India or Sri Lanka English as a universal language they have to perceive even to the uh, A level or the advanced level section so in your mind or in your opinion should we take this forward so that the children get more used to, with uh, the mathematical systems I, I believe that it's this is something which should be left on a child's personal opinion because if the base is strong which is done at the early primary level that's the time when math as a language can really form a base so it's of course based on a person's interest how they take or perceive their uh, future uh, engagements but I personally feel that the initial years math has to be taken which is compulsory i believe that's there i don't think it should be made compulsory like like a language because uh, if you if you understand that when you're learning english uh, no matter you go to the best institute if you don't speak that language you're never going to master it so similarly even if you're doing math in in the initial years if you just get a chance to you know uh, speak that language um, you're, you're good to go the entire life but to speak that language you need to empower them at the right age and that's when they're in the primary school you mentioned about uh, mathematics used in sports and especially the common language between Sri Lanka and India is cricket. So uh, when it comes to cricket, we know that uh, it's not only the fact that one has to look at the strike rate or the averages uh, like you very correctly mentioned, but uh, also when it comes to Duckworth-Lewis uh, formula and yesterday uh, Sri Lanka lost to South Africa on a Duckworth Lewis uh, formula and it was very uh, I mean unimaginable how they could uh, set a figure uh, of having a big score with uh, just 48 balls 115 runs which is not gettable so when it comes to that can this be used for teaching and learning math for the students to to know especially if you are a cricketer or if you are a sportsman how to uh, set your uh, targets okay. and uh, move ahead to win well there's a very interesting part of mathematics which is uh, i mean i would take it into two parts one is the actual commercial math and one is the statistical math so statistical math seems very interesting and it does have some relation to what you just mentioned it is based on historical data and it is based on forecasting so like you mentioned i mean 
forget, I mean, before we go to the duckworth Lewis method also, every time a, uh, a cricket match starts and you say 5 to 10 overs are down the line, the, you start seeing at the bottom that what is the projected score. You start getting that idea that, okay, if they're batting at this particular rate, that means they're going to reach at a certain uh, target and that's what starts building up But accordingly. So similarly, when you look at even your other part of uh, the duckworth Lewis method also, it's all based on a simple calculation that if a time and work, if if the batsman can score so many runs and so many balls with an average dropping of so many wickets, if that formula has been put in, what is the target if the, the overs have been reduced or, you know, you know, you have to, I mean, the match is halfway through and you have to decide the winner without playing the actual match as well. So there's a lot of use in it. I just wanted to go step by step, but I personally feel that anything and everything you do with and any sport, the rules, I mean, not even the the whole game. You just look at the playground. It's it's so driven mathematically. There is a there's a geometry geometrical aspect to every bit of it. You have a pitch at a certain angle. You have a pitch which is kept at certain position of the entire thing. You have a boundary line, a boundary line in a certain shape of a circle only. And at times it's a, it's slightly on an oval shape. But how do you actually position so that it's, it's equidistant from the entire pitch? All of those, of course, does involve a lot of math as well. Now, in your organization, the Dinasim Learning, uh, you uh, are making solutions for teacher-based uh, empowerment in learning mathematics and to make students improve. So what is this uh, GAMATH or GAMATH and GAMIFI math and why is it being used in several Asian nations? So, uh, yeah, well, GAMATH means gamification of math and it means how teachers can pick up any two objects uh, and create a game out of it. Now, when you're looking at uh, gamification, why I, I earlier mentioned that it's mainly because children love playing games. You tap their area that they love the most. And if you can show them that maths is being used in it, it becomes a lot more easier. So when you're using it in different Asian countries and for that matter, even in UAE also extensively, we focus a lot on one thing that we pick up games which are used by children in their free time like most of our research goes in which toys have or which games have been sold the most on all the major leading stores we pick up those games we create math around it and we try to empower teachers to use the same thing back inside the class so the main reason for it is there is a lot of activity based learning happening in all the schools as of today there's a major transformation teachers are trying to do way beyond what used to be done earlier but if you look at a simple thing a child is using a certain manipulative, which is based on an activity-based learning that is currently being used. He plays that activity and he leaves that objects back in school and he goes back home. He never is going to see that again. But he plays a game, like which is cricket or maybe say uh, cards or uh, you know uh, dominoes for that matter. He's playing it in the class. He goes back home and he sees that dominoes again. And when he's playing, he's constantly realizing that, okay, when I'm playing math... I mean, I'm playing this game, I'm also using math. I did the similar thing back in school as well. So that means there's a lot of possibility or that other games that I'm playing, there is a lot of math use in it. So that tickles the exploration side of a child. Apart from that, we also introduce an AR model in mathematics, which stands for the acceptance rejection model. Now, the AR model in, allows a teacher to create a game wherein a child is able to accept or reject a particular answer based on the fact that this and this cannot form a proper number or cannot be a proper equation or a fraction, but it's all driven by a game wherein they are all competing against each other. So the sole motive is to only and only compete amongst children have fun but when they start playing this game the first 10 15 minutes they think they're only playing a game suddenly they slip into the fact that oh we are not only just playing a game but we've also got a very fair idea of what this concept is all about and then that allows them to think that if this is so easy that means everything that we've been taught in math also has to be that easy too and they start finding various ways that where is it being used on the outside world right you being the founder of this Dinasim Learning and uh, you're promoting this idea. I know that in Nepal, for example, but you are very new to Sri Lanka. So how do you uh, project yourself to promote this concept in the Sri Lankan context? We're trying to uh, work with uh, a lot of local content. We're trying to identify games. We are initially right now working on uh, conceptualizing more indoor as well as outdoor games that has been more popularly used in Sri Lankan schools. Uh, children, for that matter, 
and eventually put that down. We're trying to talk to a lot of uh, international schools, privately owned, trying to work, trying to identify government schools and see how we could collaborate in a manner which would empower teachers in a, in a bigger picture. Because if we empower teachers, it's easier to empower a lot of students. So our project has been uh, primarily been focused on international private schools as well as government schools. And we're trying hard to figure out where we could work with uh, them to empower all sorts of teachers so that they could create games and use these games so effectively and so effortlessly like for example uh, i don't know if anybody would relate to it but the most commonly used uh, you know there's a soft ball which is used for acupressure you just you know press in your hand that one soft ball could be used right from grade one teaching them tables skip counting numbers going up to integers decimals fractions algebra and it goes all over imagine a teacher walking in in a classroom with a small soft ball and teaching all of this effortlessly building concepts revising them helping children to look at it that okay maths is not all that boring or not only related to textbook or solving i'm sure they will have a different uh, perspective towards math let me ask you in conclusion that nowadays parents don't like their children getting uh, addicted to especially the screens like uh, the smartphones or internet and so forth so what is your advice to the parents in getting these children overcome their mathematical problems in using especially the e-applications based uh, in the smartphones and the computers? Well, I would say it's always good to move with uh, the moving technology. I'm not saying that I'm against it, but I feel that there has to be a balanced use of screen time and off screen time. Uh, I would recommend parents primarily that if they could try and put in a little effort, say maybe 15 to 20 minutes a week, and try and conceptualize what is their children's favorite, uh, you know, uh, sport or hobby or something and try to map that beyond the screens. I know a lot of fantastic applications, but I personally feel at the initial years, um, we need a human interaction, which I want uh, parents to spend or teachers to spend that time with children directly so that you create that imaginative thought process in children. You do not, because when you're looking at a screen, you're only following instructions given by them. You don't ask them a question, right? So you're playing a game online. I'm, I'm not too much in favor of that, but I personally feel that it's more better to do hands-on when a child is, uh, you know, more exposed to nature, playing something physically. There's more interaction between human beings and this competition, this exchange of thoughts, exchange of ideas. And the most important thing is exploration, which will happen only with human interaction. Without that human interaction, you can't really, ex you know, expect a child to explore much using just an application. This morning in Coffee with Dan, I discuss about the breaking the myth behind mathematics with Mr. Divesh Patija, who is the founder of Dinasim Learning LLP India. So thank you very much, Divesh, for being here this morning in Coffee with Dan. Absolute pleasure.